Hello, EVE Online Miners. This is Most Wanted again. And I'm back to do another video. I want to focus this time around on uh, another type of class ship that's being ganked in high security space. And that is the Orca. It's pretty bad. I mean, they're ganking multiples of these a day. Uh, I don't know how I didn't realize it initially, but yeah, they're they're ganking orcas as well. So I decided to go ahead and do a little orca fitting video and um, teach you how to fit the orca. Now I want to preface this: if if you cannot fit uh, your orca with shield mods, if you if you can't even do gang links, then I would not be using an orca in, in space. If you can't fit a damage control two, if you can't fit tech two shield hardeners, um, and you and you can't use at least tech one gang links, there's no reason whatsoever for you to be in an orca. You can grab a Miasmos, which holds like sixty three thousand, sixty two thousand M three, I think, and you can uh, pull this drone in, and and you can haul for your group. Don't bring out an orca if you can't give fleet bonuses and you can't fit hardeners. It's just going to be a floating casket. You're going to get ganked eventually. And you're not doing your, your group any bit of the good. You, you'll have a slightly larger cargo hold, but the ship will be very weak and very easy to gank. So, don't do it. Just... If you want to fly the ship, the put it aside until you have the skills to fly it properly. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Okay, so this right here is what I mean. This guy bought himself an Orca. He fit a survey scanner and a pair of warp core stabilizers, which prevent you from being scrammed. The ship is so big, it takes so long to align, that the destroyers that came to his belt, it didn't matter. There were, uh, I think like 11 of them or something like that. Um, and all of them had warp scramblers on their ships. So, you know, he could only prevent two of them, to, if, if only two of those guys had warp scramblers, and he was full speed aligned, he could have warped out. But... He obviously wasn't full speed aligned. He and and more of those destroyers had points on them, so he really wasn't able to do anything about it. He got ganked. He got ganked pretty hard. It only took seventy-seven thousand, uh, well, almost seventy-eight thousand damage before it exploded, and that's not very much at all. So he had a very very weak tank. There's no reason for him to be in it. Because um, the the ore hold bonus and the cargo bonus isn't worth the risk of the ship. Isn't worth the ship at all. You could just be in a Miasmos. Train up that. Because if you're not giving fleet bonuses and you're not tanking your ship properly, then you're just a, you know, a liability to the corporation you're in. They're just going to see your ship get ganked, they're going to get all mad and sad, and uh, maybe potentially want to do something stupid to get their ships killed, so it, it just isn't worth it. Don't don't get into a ship unless you can properly fit it. Now, what do I mean by properly fit? Well, you know, you can nerf, you can only nerf your cargo hold and your ore hold and uh, your other things so much before the ship isn't worth it. Uh, but there's a couple key things you want your ship to be capable of doing. You want your ships to be capable of giving gang bonuses. So give yourself uh, some time to skill up at least the Tech 1 uh, Mining Foreman links. Slap on an implant that can uh, increase the bonuses to that. I believe... Let me pull this up real quick. Implants, I think it's under other. And there's the information warfare. 
mining form and mine link. There you go. So, you know, get this mining form and mine link and get yourself at least the tech one variations of those uh, links. And with that, you should be able to to give your 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 gang some pretty decent bonuses. But don't don't use it as just a pure hauler because you're you're better off getting it something cheaper that that requires less skills to make happen. Um, with that said, the next thing you want to do is it is defaultly if you look at the the shield hit points and the armor hand points and then you look at the fit, it's obviously a shield tanking ship. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to fit a shield tank and I would look at increasing all your resistances but you you want to mainly focus on the kinetic thermal. So I'll, I'll put it on all resistances for right now and what you're going to do is you're going to add EM, kinetic, thermal, and an adaptive of invulnerability field. So all your mid slots are full with mods that are going to give you resistances and you're thinking well where's my where's my survey scanner where's my micro warp where's my this where's my you know uh, sensor booster so I can lock cans so I can tractor them you don't need to tractor cans you can drop a MTU uh, mining tractor unit right next to your ship and have that do the tractoring for you it can tractor cans from 125 kilometers away as long as you're in fleet with someone they can tractor in their cans for you. There's no reason to fit even a, a tractor beam on the ship if you don't want to. Um, so don't bother fitting an ore scanner. L let the miners do the ore scanning because they're the ones actually mining. Um, and just fit yourself some shield hardeners. If you cannot do the Tech 2 variants, don't fly the ship. You, you aren't old enough to fly the ship. You know, you don't have the proper support skills to fly the ship. So you shouldn't be in it. The asteroid is depleted. This might be hard to hear, but it's a reality that it's just gonna hit you in the face when you lose your ISK and, and your ship. Come on. What? What's going on here? Oh, something crazy happened. All right, so <clears throat> if you can't fake the Tecto hardeners, don't, don't uh, bother. Now, the next thing you want to do, if you look at the resistances, um, default we started with 88,000. That's with all level five, and then we jumped to 117 by adding the hardeners. Now, there's another skill that's not required for the shield tanking that I'm going to ask you to get, and that's going to be thermal dynamics. And what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to overheat mods. And if you watch the effective hit points, if my invulnerability field it jumps to 120, Con thermal 123, kinetic 126, EM 130. So for a minute and 60 seconds, which is more time than than you know a normal gank will take, you can increase your effective hit points, and in that way you know you can tank longer I didn't bother to fit anything for the explosive because um, it's less likely they're going to be dealing explosive they'll be they might de deal one par par part of the damage that they put towards you might be explosive but I wouldn't dedicate a, an explosive hardener to it I, I would worry about the EM thermal and kinetic um, now that you have kind of maxed out your shield. I always recommend anytime you have a shield fit ship that you fit a damage control to it. So now we went from 131 to 228. How in the world did we get so much effective hit points on one mod? Well, if you look right above the resistances, we've got 13,000 shield, 8,600 hit points on armor, and then 57,500 in structure. And if you remember, the damage control adds 60% across the board to structure. So a damage control is huge. I would never put a cargo expander on a ship in lieu of a damage control on an orca. Regardless what else you take from this, always fit a damage control to an orca. There's no reason not to. Nerf your cargo hold for the couple hundred, couple thousand M3, and 
fit of damage control is going to increase your effective hit points by a huge margin. I'm even going to go over to this fit with no other mods fit. I'm going to put just the damage control in. So you can see here our effective hit points more than doubles by adding just this one mod alone. It's a cheap mod. It's under a million isk. All it requires you to train up is Hollow Grades 4, which I believe is like a multiplier 2 skill. I'm not even going to bother to look it up. I, I know it's low multiplier. It's a multiplier 1 or multiplier 2 skill. So it's super easy to train. Um, so don't get into an Orca if you can't fit a damage control. Don't undock unless you have a damage control fit. 5047. I was kind of wondering if I could do that. I guess I can't. Alright, this this MTU should be full. Just gonna pull my drones in. Turn the drone bay. The asteroid is depleted. Yeah, we're up to my next warp belt. Drive. So warp, warp drive don't active. don't undock unless you have a damage control fit. Always have it running while you're in space. The uh, shield mods, I might, what I would do is I would pre-overheat, and what I mean by that is I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to left click my mod, and you see here it's got that green at the top of it. That means it's ready to overheat. As soon as I activate that mod, it's going to begin overheating. And the, what you get for overheating de you know, differs depending on the mod. For something like a shield booster, it's going to reduce the cycle time which means I'll be able to rep more, although, you know, since it's cycling more, it's going to be a bigger strain on my cap. For something like a resistance mod, it's going to increase the resistance. Because there's no benefit per cycle. It's not like a shield booster that's going to give you hit points. What all the hardeners do is, is increase resistance, so that overheating is going to increase the resistance. And um, you, you won't get this much heat protection unless you have the thermodynamics to level uh, five, but to be honest, you don't need it that high. Um, I'll take it down to three. You see here, it, it didn't do any real major effect. So you don't have to have thermal dynamics at five. You can have it probably even at one. It's still going to give you over a minute. It's more than enough time. So don't bother trying to get thermal dynamics to five. It's not important. Just get it to one so you can do the overheating, and that's the best thing you can do. So, now the rest could potentially be up to you. You could cargo rig this, and you could throw a cargo expander in the lows, but to be honest, if you're going to be in a system that can be hostile at times, then I wouldn't go for capacity, because all it's going to do is, it's not going to affect your ore hold. The only thing you're going to be affecting is your cargo hold, and you're not going to be affecting it by a huge margin. Let me open up this, and I'll put in... Uh, ship modifications, large. I'm really happy that larges are workers use large rather than capital rigs. Um, oh, I always get these mixed up. I think it's astro. No, wait. Yeah, yeah, it is. All right, so we can increase the cargo. The base though was 37,500. Then we up to 57, and if I use that last. Uh, low slot, I can get it to 72,000. So from, crap, I forgot what it was again. 72,000, 37,000 to 72,000. That's a pretty decent amount, but your oral hold is bigger than that to begin with. Well, no, your oral hold's 50,000. Um, you should really think about um, You should really think about is it is it worth the um, potentially losing the ship to to you know get a little bit more use out of your cargo hold? What you could do is you could balance out maybe some of the rigs with some of the cargo. Now I'm going to do is show you more of a max tanky fit, and uh, you'll be surprised how much more we can get out of it above and beyond that 280,000. Uh, let me start mining here real quick, and I'll get to that.
Okay, so now if you remember, the uh, we have a whole boatload of structure, and with the damage control, that structure um, gave us a whole bunch of effective hit points. Now, what you could do is you can, can you can uh, increase your structure's hit points, and when you're doing things like when you're using things like orcas that have a lot of base hit points, you wouldn't want to throw on something like a uh, 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 a plate that would increase your armor hit points by a fixed amount, or you wouldn't want to put on a shield extender that's going to increase your shields by a fixed amount. If if a shield extender is going to give you you know a thousand shields, it would be better to give you a mod that gave you twelve percent to shields because that's going to be more than the shield extender is going to give you in hit points. Same thing goes for armor. Same thing goes for structure. There's a mod that can increase by a percentage factor your structure, and that is the reinforced bulkheads. Now watch this. Look at the effective hit points. 228. Bam. 220. Uh, 264. So we went up by what? 40,000 effective hit points? That's huge. We went from 50 odd thousand to 70,000 structure hit points and with the resistance it gave us 40,000 in uh, effective hit points. Now you could leave it at that. Then you can go ahead and throw on your cargo optimizations and you would get 57,000 in your cargo hold and 50,000 in your ore hold and you'd have like 107,000 M3 total and you can call that done. If you want to be a little bit more tanky than that then remember we've got over 8,000 shield hit points. What we could do is increase the resistance to those shields and we can add uh, or we can just plainly add more hit points. These shield rigs increase the shields by 10%, and we could go and just increase that. Now we have 300,000 effective hit points. That is huge. Remember, the default fit was uh, 88,000, and the guy that lost his ship, it only took 77,000 to kill him. If you're sitting in an asteroid built with even even 264,000, they're not going to suspect that they're going to need to bring that much to the field in order to take you out. You're sitting at almost freighter level amounts of um, effective hit points, but uh, y if you go hardcore and you throw in that um, shield rigs, then you're going to go from 264,000 to 300,000. Uh, and if we switch this over to kinetic thermal, because Believe it or not, they're still going to be using kinetic thermal damage. Either they don't think you've got a lot of effective hit points, and they're going to go with destroyers, or they're potentially going to come with um, Taloses, which are the battleship equivalent to um, the battleship equivalent to it. They're going to use battleship guns, and they're relatively cheap, and they do um, pretty nice amount of damage, uh, 800 to 1,000 DPS. And uh, if they do bring that, you might be done, but they could still potentially not bring enough and be, um, you know, not able to break your tank. So if we go racial, then we're we get bumped up to three. 341,000 effective hit points, but we could go racial with our rigs, kinetic thermal, and now, ooh, we actually, did we go racial? Yeah, we did go racial. We lost some effective hit points. Oh no. Okay, so maybe that's not worth it in the end. I think I, I, I fit this with, before the I did the overheating, I guess the overheating kind of nerfs that, so <clears throat> 341,000 effective hit points. And then, there are, and if you can't fit this, or at least you don't have the skills to fit any of this, then I, I wouldn't undock. You wouldn't necessarily have to fit this, but if you don't have the shield skills and, and the rig skills and all this other stuff to fit all this, then I wouldn't. You can, like I said, you can go with Tech 1 uh, links, but you should be capable of, uh, of the other mods, otherwise you, you probably shouldn't undock. And then there's a single implant that I found that can increase your shields by 5%, and if I click that on, 
you get a little bit more. You get another 7,000 effective hit points. You could totally ignore that. I, I think there's a 6% version of that. And I thought there was a, a set of implants that increased your effective passive hit points. But the... Uh, the implant set is purely for active tanking, and I wouldn't bother to active tank an orca. I mean, you could um, you could throw an extra large shield booster pre overheat and still go with the reinforced bulkheads and the damage control, and just hope that you know the rep cycles hold and, and all other good stuff. But you would be losing resistance in the process, so you'd be kind of the resistance you lost wouldn't be worth the, the rep you would gain in the process of ganking them ganking you, so. Anywho, uh, so that is like a hardcore ganker, uh, gank protection. They would completely be unable to gank you if they didn't realize um, you had overheating skills. Maybe they didn't even scan you at all. Um, but I would personally still probably cargo rig the ship, just for the convenience factor. If you're going to be an orchid, then you need to be able to move a decent amount of ore, so I would probably throw the uh, cargo hold optimizations on it. It's still going to require a boatload of um, a boatload of catalysts to kill you, and I think you'd be alright. So, what else? Um... You could throw a smart bomb on here, and if they do scan you, and they do see a smart bomb on your ship, they might assume that you're going to go ahead and use it on them. And what they'll do is they'll bring their cloaky scout that's going to be doing the, you know, the scanning on your fit. They might bring him into range so that when you do use a smart bomb, then you do lose the ship to, you know, because of Concord. But what I would do is I would. So we could, here we go. I would offline the mod because you really can't online the mod. You'll have fitting issues. Leave the mod offline. I mean, you can make the fitting issues go away if you if you got a three percent CPU hardwire. But I wouldn't use the smart bomb in high sec, even if you're going to potentially just use it to get on their kill mails because you could potentially smart bomb a cloaked ship and then you get concorded. So it's not a good idea. But if you put this on here, then they might assume that you're d just dumb enough t to use it on them, and then of course they uh, they get to the, they get you to kill yourself, even if they fail to gank you. Uh, also, what I might do is completely offline your hardeners, but like I said, pre overheat them like this, pre overheat them, and then as soon as they come to your belt, uh, you could wait a second and then just activate all of the hardeners that you got on there. Activate everything. Activate it all. <laughs> they can't tell if you have the damage control running or not, but they can tell if you have the shield hardeners running. And if you have them uh, deactivated, then they might assume that you're AFK, you don't know what you're doing, especially if they see a smart bomb fit on your ship. They might assume you don't know what you're doing, and you could potentially kill yourself in the process, so um, you know, that might be a benefit to you, to, to fit, and I think that's about it, I mean, you really have to weigh the pros and cons of, of nerfing your cargo for adding effective hit points, but to me, at least this fit is kind of a an obvious, you know, way to go, just pre-overheats and, and let them, you know, come at you, just say, come at me, bro, because... They're completely going to be unprepared for the amount of um, the amount of damage they have to put in to kank you, and they might give they might you know realize this and, and make a second attempt, and I wouldn't stick around for it because then they will bring enough because they have taken down freighters in high sec on on gates nonetheless. So I think it they're on the gates. I know there's a there's a thing now that people like bringing freighters to asteroid belts. So I don't know if some of those freighters were killed on asteroid belts. But, um, yeah, don't don't be like this guy here. Don't buy the ship 
take it to an asteroid belt so your buddies can empty their kernite into you and then lose the ship because you have a horribly bad fit. So, uh, thanks you guys for watching. If this video was helpful, useful, or entertaining, then like the video. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas about the fits, or about flying an orc in high sec, or any of that jazz, then go ahead and leave it in the comments below, and have a nice day.